guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are not in my craft room because frankly, my craft room is a hot mess and I'm hiding from my kids. I just wanted to pop on here before the video starts and just give a huge shout out to Lisa Bolin from Sugar Creek Designs. She is my inspiration for this tumbler. She made this absolutely gorgeous patina tumbler and I was literally in awe over it. So I wish I could take credit for doing this whole design right out of my brain, but I can't. I took your inspiration, I took your design, I kind of finagled it, made it my own, but the basis is the same, which is your amazing design. Go check out her work, it is absolutely fabulous. If you go, let her know I sent you, just say, hey, here at VMD Design, saw her tutorial, she mentioned you, I'm here to look at all your gorgeous cups, maybe purchase one or two. I am all for supporting small businesses, tumbler makers, anybody. This We all the family in the art world, we all family. All right, that's it, enough chit chat. I know, cause some of y'all be like, thank you so much for not talking a lot and I'm not gonna do it. Anyways, back to the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, I've already sanded and prepped my tumbler and sprayed it with Rust-Oleum metallic finish and bright rose gold. I also covered it with Krylon triple thick spray paint to keep the epoxy from separating on the metallic surface. But you can skip this step if you use Mod Podge. To keep from having a lot of epoxy layers, I'm going to help my glitter lay flat by using non-stick parchment paper. I gently rub the glitter down with my hand and I make sure to rub gently so I don't mess up the glitter layer. Let your glitter layer cure, seal with a coat of epoxy, and we'll be ready to add the split portion of our tumbler. Make sure your rim is nice and smooth before you proceed. Use a fine grit, like something over 1000. I use one of my old worn sanding blocks. Okay guys, please don't come for me, but I rarely measure anything when it comes to my tumblers. I usually eyeball it, wing it, whatever you want to call it. I start by placing the tape and going around the tumbler until the bottom portion of the tape meets with the top on the opposite side. do the same exact thing on the other side and start the tape on the opposite side of the tumbler and go alongside the first piece of tape. You can absolutely measure this part if you want it to be perfect, but for me, y'all, I'm so lazy. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. When you're done and you have both of your pieces of tape the way you want them, continue taping over that section until it's fully covered. Then we'll be ready to add our spray paint. paint is fully dry, we're ready to add our base layer of colors for our rustic side. I'm using Arteza brand paints, but you can use any brand in similar colors. But for the white, make sure you have a pearlescent white or a white with some kind of shimmer.
apply your paint any way you like, up, down, sideways, it literally will be your base color, so you won't see them very much. paint layers dry, I use my heat gun to speed up the process so you can do this step in all one sitting. Just be sure to not overheat your tumbler or the paint will bubble up. Now I'm ready to add some texture using a palette knife. I dip it into the black paint and lightly scrape it across the tumbler. This will leave a really cool effect and will give you some ridges and slopes in the paint. Do the same thing with the white, keeping in mind that when we add our inks, the white will be where the inks will pop. If you want more color, add more white. If you want a darker look, add more black. Next, we're ready to add our inks. I'll be using the inks, a medicine cup with alcohol, and a paintbrush. I'll also have a paper towel to clean off my paintbrush between inks. I add the inks going from the blue to the red. When they blend, you'll get a gorgeous purple in spots. When you're finished, I like to use the alcohol and go over the inks to lighten them up and really give them some depth. This is where the pearl white paint really brings the inks at extra definition. I totally discovered this effect by accident when I made this design previously and I grabbed the pearl paint instead of my regular white. And what a happy accident it was. It makes the inks look almost opalescent. After your inks are dry, you can really see the texture from the paint. Now we'll add some flakes for some added texture.
done, seal the whole section with a light spray of Krylon Triple Thick and seal with epoxy until smooth. Then we'll be ready to add our decals. To figure out how long to make my gold strips, I used measuring tape to go along the dividing line. For this 24 ounce plump, I made my lines 10 and 3 quarter inches. Measuring tape is essential for figuring out how big or small you want your decals to be. Add your final coats of epoxy and you'll be all done. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. Have fun making your rustic leopard split tumblers and I'll see you again next time. Bye.